In proposition 9, we're going to show how to bisect an angle using ruler and compass. Let's check this out. To bisect a given rectilineal angle, let the angle BAC be the given rectilineal angle. So let's draw that in. So let's say this is our angle here. Call this BAC. So that's a given angle. The next step is let a point D be taken at random on AB. So I'll choose this point over here. That's point D. Now let AE be cut off from AC equal to AD. And recall we can do this from proposition 3. And I'll demonstrate using a compass how this would work. So I place the center at A. And what I'm going to do is draw a little arc from D over to AC. And I'm going to mark that point right there. That's going to be our point E. So that AE is going to be equal to AD. So see, we cut off from the bigger line segment, AC, a part AE, which is equal to AD. And next, we join DE. So we'll just join those two. Here over to here. And now, on DE, on this new line segment, let the equilateral triangle DEF be constructed. Okay, that's the next stage. We're going to construct the equilateral triangle. And recall how we do this. We place our center. We'll go over here first. Place our center at E. The radius is going to be E over to D. And what I'll do is I'll just draw a little bit of a circle. And I'll do the same for D. Letting our radius be DE. I'll draw out some arc like that. And then I'll take note of their intersection, which appears to be right there. And we're going to call this point F. And he says, let the equilateral triangle DEF be constructed. So we're just going to join these. We're going to join D to F and F to E. And finally, let AF be joined. So here down to F. Simply use our straight edge to do so. And that completes the construction. Now we're going to prove that the construction does what he claims it does, namely that this line segment here bisects the angle BAC. He says, I say that the angle BAC has been bisected by the straight line AF, that line that we just drew in there. Four, since AD is equal to AE, so let's take note of that, AD is equal to AE. Remember, we cut off. We use proposition 3 to do that. So those two guys are equal. AF is common. So I'll mark that with a double dash. AF is common. The two sides DA and AF are equal to the two sides EA and AF, respectively. Let's review that. DA is equal to EA. That's right. AF it's of course equal to AF. And the base DF is equal to the base EF. Let's review that as well. So DF is equal to EF. Why is that true? Remember, this triangle is equilateral. So I'll we'll use the triple dash here. Therefore, the angle DAF is equal to the angle EAF. So we have DAF. That's this angle here, he claims is equal to EAF. Now, why is he going to conclude that? Because, check out the triangle DAF. In fact, I'll draw that in a different color just to highlight it. We have the triangle DAF. And also, take note of the triangle FEA from here to here to here. And you'll notice that we can use the previous proposition, proposition 8, because these two triangles have their respective sides equal to one another. We can use a side-side-side theorem. 
And hence, we conclude that these two triangles are equal, and therefore we conclude that their respective angles are going to be equal. Notice that these two angles are both opposite to the triple dash side, DF and FE. These two angles are equal, and that's what it means to bisect the angle. So therefore, the angle BAC has been bisected. And Euclid concludes, therefore, the given rectilineal angle BAC has been bisected by the straight line AF. And that's all.